Good morning. Good morning. Uh, ruling elders preach occasionally. We're called to preach occasionally. And so this is an occasional sermon. And the occasion, uh, it, the, the content is God's word. The occasion is you, uh, the student body and faculty uh, of, of the Reformed Presbyterian Theological Seminary, a place that I love. I'm thankful for my colleagues who are here full-time. I kind of dip in occasionally. Um, and so it's a privilege for me to be here with you this morning. What burdens you from the Scripture? What Scripture passage or Scripture verse do you feel the weight of? Let me give you some examples. James 2.10, if you keep the whole law but fail in one point, you've broken the whole law. James 4.17, whoever knows the right thing to do and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. Um, Romans 14, 23, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. I'm burdened. And uh, of course, we're supposed to share one another's burdens, and so I just shared some burdens with you. If you weren't burdened by those passages, you can be burdened with me now. And I'm sure there are other kinds of things, because that's how the Scripture works. It knows us for who we are. Uh, and as we encounter it, uh, when we're left to ourselves, we can find ourselves in favorable light. And then we come to the Scriptures, uh, and, it, and it gives us a burden, and, and it's clear with us. Um, and so uh, I, I'm wanting to talk with you today um, about a, a dilemma that we come to in Scripture, and I want to talk with you about a direction that the Scripture gives us a place to look in regards to the dilemma that we face. And then I want us to think about a resolution uh, of that dilemma and how we can live uh, within it by God's grace and by God's grace alone. So there's a burden that we share that's given to us in James 3, verses 1 and 2, and it says, it's a burden that we share together. Not many of you should be teachers. <laughs> Not many of you should be teachers because you'll be judged more strictly. You'll be judged more strictly. And, um, and that we stumble. So many of us in this room are called to be preachers and or teachers and it's an important calling, but not many of us should, but here we are, and we will stumble. That's our burden. That's our burden today that I want us to consider. And the problem, here's the dilemma. The dilemma is we cannot speak, and we must speak. We cannot speak without stumbling, and we must speak. No Christian is a good speaker in and of ourselves. And especially we become aware of that when we're under God's word. The wonder, the beauty, the excellence, uh, where that's true at Reformed Presbyterian Theological Seminaries, we're deeply committed to being under God's Word. We do not study the Word of God from above it. We are under it and relying upon it. Three exhibits of our dilemma. Moses, exhibit number one, Moses, I am slow of speech and tongue. When he comes into God's presence, I can't speak. Isaiah, he, he's in God's presence and says, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I come from a people of unclean lips. Jeremiah, in God's presence. 
I can't speak. I'm slow of tongue. I'm only a youth. And so we live in this dilemma that particularly under God's word, we recognize that we cannot speak and that we must speak. This is part of what it means to be trained for the gospel ministry, is to live within this dilemma. So we're burdened. What direction does the scripture give us to help us to think about living within this? Well, as a professor of communication, um, it's part of my job to know where the scripture speaks about these things. And one of the clearest and simplest statements that's very deep and very helpful in all of scripture is also from James. In James chapter 1, verses 19, and tw- 19 to 21, we hear the Lord say, Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to become angry. For the anger of man or of men does not produce the righteousness that God requires. So we know this. We we know this in our hearts and minds. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. And again, the scriptures know us. This is precisely what's so difficult for us to do. And I know that there are husbands and fathers in this room. And husbands and fathers in particular are uh, immensely capable of hearing a little, knowing exactly what's going on, jumping to a conclusion, speaking with passion. That's not a personality trait, by the way. That cuts across all ethnic and cultural lines. You can find it in every literature in the world that men are inclined this way. And the scripture knows us for who we are. And women have their ways as well, but not being a woman, I won't speak (laughs) to that question this morning. So uh, we have this beginning look um, into a, a direction, and that brings us to our text, because we have to ask, why? Why does God tell us to be quick to listen? I mean, yes, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And we can answer, well, it's good for us, and we can answer, but there are deeper biblical reasons for this. Please turn in your Bibles to um, the book of Exodus and chapter 33. Please look at Exodus chapter 33. Uh, We're going to read today uh, verses 17 through 34, 9. 33, 17 to 34, 9. I'll be reading from the um, English Standard Version, which I believe you have uh, in your seats. Please hear this living word of God, the holy inerrant word of God. This is the most important word you will hear from this pulpit this morning. And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The Lord said to Moses, cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the first, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. 
be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and let no one be seen throughout all the mountain. Let no flocks or herds graze opposite that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took his, in his hand two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, Please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. As for the reading and the hearing of God's holy word, may he add his blessing to it. Three things I would like you to think with me about related to this text. First of all, Think about the people who ask, what is God like? What is God like? In this one passage, God reveals himself in a very clear form of what he's like. And Moses says, show me your glory. And God says, no, I will speak. I will not show you my glory. You will not see my face. I will speak with you. The Lord approaches us over and over again with his word spoken to us and so reveals himself to us in his word. So what is God like? The second thing I want you to notice is that he speaks love. He leads with grace and mercy as he reveals himself to Moses. And he takes his time talking about his graciousness and his mercy and his steadfast love and his faithfulness to generations. I want you to notice that this becomes a biblical refrain. What is the Lord like? slow to anger, abounding in love, over and over and over again. We hear it here in the law, slow to anger and abounding in love. We hear it in the Psalms. We hear it in the prophets. What is God like? Slow to anger, abounding in love. We hear it in the Gospels. We hear it in the epistles. And I would take you, if I had the time this morning, on a tour of the pastoral epistles and see how this pattern exhibits itself for Timothy and Titus, leading with grace, leading with love, without allowing the guilty to go unpunished. That the nature of pastoral ministry is to lead with grace, knowing the judgment is coming, knowing that judgment is real. God approaches us. God tarries in Second Peter because he's slow to anger and abounding in love. We get impatient, but God's slowness is not slow as some people count slowness. Slow to anger and abounding in love. The last thing that I want you to notice is that in hearing God's word, look at Moses' response. 
Moses responds in first with worship. He hits his knees and he goes down and worships God. But not only does he worship the Lord, he calls for God to come into the midst of the people. Can you hear him say, Emmanuel? Emmanuel, come in the midst of us. You're terrifying, but you're gracious. Come into our midst. I cannot lead this people unless you're right here with us. Not with me, with us, with this stiff-necked people. And so we hear God answer Moses' prayer. John 1 Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth, steadfast love and mercy, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The reason that we are called to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry is not pragmatic. It's not folk wisdom. It's not a good idea. It's not found in theory of communication. It's not a good rhetorical principle. It's a call for us to be transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ to become like Christ and to become like our Father. That people would say to us, you are slow to anger and abounding in love. And that we might say to them, no, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I come from a people of unclean lips. I'm slow of speech. I'm young. I can't speak. But my Father has come into the midst of us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has brought grace upon grace. And he has spoken his name. And he has given us his name. And therefore, we can learn in fits and starts as we stumble along. We can't speak. We must speak. Lord, help us to speak slowly and to be slow to anger abounding in love to lead god's people with grace please pray with me heavenly father we live under your word we live knowing your name because you have revealed it to us in the lord jesus christ We need your presence with us, Lord Jesus. We praise you that you have given us your Holy Spirit and that you come into our midst when we gather in your name. We thank you for the overwhelming power of your name, that through it we know grace, we have known grace, and we have hope in grace for the future and throughout all eternity. I pray for your blessing on this people and ask that you would prepare them well to lead by your grace, knowing your judgment is certain, knowing your righteousness is unshaken, but recognizing that we have no place to stand except in your grace. Through Christ we pray. Amen.